Hey, hey, my friends, welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia, and today we're taking a look at X-Men First Class in another one of our Marvel United Deep Dives. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell and get notified. And here's a notification for you. If you like fantasy, but your well has run dry because you've had enough of Westeros and Middle-earth and wherever the hell Witcher takes place to last you a lifetime, have no fear because I want to invite you into the land of everywhere, which is the setting of my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards. That's right, I'm a fantasy novelist on top of all this crazy Marvel United stuff that I do, and you can get We Were Wizards on Amazon right now in three different formats. This purple book is the first one to read, followed by this gray one, Seekers of the Stones, Ghosts of Wizards Past. And man, these are my pride and joys, my babies. Check out We Were Wizards for yourself or the fantasy fan in your life. All right, gang, X-Men First Class. These are the X-Men as they were introduced to the world way, way back in the 60s when Stan Lee sat down one day and decided, you yeah, know, it's really hard to come up with reasons for these characters to get superpowers. So what if they were just born with the powers just like that and it saves me the trouble? True story. That's the origin of the X-Men in a nutshell. But the X-Men First Class Expansion at first glance, might not look like much. At second and third and maybe even 45th glance, maybe a different story. So let's take a look at what's inside the box, see how many points of worthiness we can find. Okay, if you're a vitamin C fan, now is the time to cue up the graduation song. But either way, it's X-Men First Class, which I could be wrong because I came late into the game of the campaign, but I think this was the very first expansion that they announced for the X-Men uh, season, which makes sense because it's kind of the most underwhelming one. Um, well, let me rephrase that. It's the one with the least fresh characters, maybe. Maybe that's a better way to say it. I think it's cool. I didn't pick it up at first, but I got it afterwards because I'm like, you know what? First class is all right. First class is all right. So I picked this up later on, and in my opinion, it was well worth it getting it afterwards, but let's take a look. Thankfully, my local game store had it for a fair price, which is hard to find. Uh, all right, that's what is on the back. Let's see what it says. In a time where mutants were first coming to the light, Charles Xavier gathered the most promising of these outcasts and created the first class of his special school for gifted youngsters. Through much hardship and excruciating training, these youngsters were shaped into the first team of mutant heroes, the X-Men, their training is about to be put to the test against the combined powers of the Maximoff twins. School time is over. It's time for the first class to show their quality. And if they're anything like Faramir, they will show their quality and it will be the very highest. And now we have this nice little picture saying you need at least one of these to play, which is a great way of telling people they can mix and match. That's the fun of the United system is all the mixing, right? These characters are all just a bunch of mixed nuts looking for a bowl. So let's open first class and take a look inside at what you get if you pick this expansion up for yourself. All right. And oh, I could have read the same blurb there. I didn't realize that they were doing them inside as well. That is great. And it says, welcome to the school for gifted youngsters. Uh, that's a, a pattern I noticed that all the rules leaflets in the expansions all say welcome to something. Uh, ex with the exception of like one or two, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and there you go, you flip that over, it shows you exactly what you are getting. All right, so we will take a look inside. First of all, we have an extra special location, the Danger Room, which they did not make into a full location. They made it into this alternate one that you can slap on top of any other one uh, to make the game a little bit easier. Uh, maybe I should use the danger room the next time I face off against people like the Vulture or Sabretooth. Maybe this is what I've been missing because I've never used the danger room before. So there you go. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Then it comes with three locations and they are Cape Citadel, from the very first issue of the X-Men, that's where they go and they fight Magneto. Uh, Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters, the way it appeared in the 60s. Very beautiful. And Island M, 
which I believe is where Magneto lived back in the day. I don't know. These are very retro 60s spots, and I like them all a lot. And inside you will find the villain dashboard for the only villain in this box, but it's a double whammy of the villain. It's Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver together. Um, and we already got Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver as heroes in Season 1. And now, in the Witching Hour, which I'm still waiting for, come on, Simon, uh, you can get Scarlet Witch on her own as the very powerful Scarlet Witch. But right here, we have them uh, with their special setup and all their goodies if you're playing on supervillain mode, plus everything that they can do there. Uh, fun little dual villain to face. Uh, and, you know, a nice little surprise when I picked this up. I was like, oh yeah, it comes with a dual villain, which I didn't have before. Now, let's take this out of the way and see what's inside. So you also will notice there is this tiny little cardboard punch-out thing of Iceman's uh, ice tokens. And I have punched them out periodically as I've played Iceman, but I've popped them back in there just so I could easily store them. Um, but that comes in the box for Iceman. And then we'll take a look at what is over here. Whoops. All right, so on this left-hand side, first of all, we've got the villain cards, which are for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. And what's nice, too, is they are using the green Quicksilver from back in his first appearance when he was evil, because uh, once he turned into a hero, he started wearing that silvery blue. So it's nice. That's why this is green and red, in case you're wondering, like, whoa, what is that green? Uh, they have these very special um, four-star threats, but they're pretty cool, because when you clear this, you delay the next villain turn. They are a fun couple of villains to fight. So that's their deck right there. Very, very nice. He moves fast because he's Quicksilver. And then you get into the decks of the heroes. Uh, starting with Iceman, the first class version, who was much more of a snowman back in the day before he became less of a snowman and more of an Iceman. And these cards are very, very nice. Uh, followed by Angel, who was, fun fact, he was kind of the deciding factor that really made me want to get this box um, because I had already gotten the box that had Archangel, but I always saw Angel and Archangel, even though I know they're the same guy, I always saw them as two different, two very different kind of people. I always kind of looked at it as Archangel was like the dark troubled one and Angel was the regular sort of default version of him. So I liked the idea of having both. So getting this box and getting Angel in it was really, really, uh, it, it helps tip my vote, it sway my vote to getting the first class box. So those are some of the heroes that are in there. I'm gonna just drop that back where it belongs. And on the other side, you've already seen Iceman and Angel, but on the other side, you get, whoops, that, uh, that goes there for a second. You get the Cyclops uh, with his classic look, which I, <laughs> if you've heard me uh, last week, you know I prefer my Cyclops with visible hair. Thank you very much. But that's him. And then there's Marvel Girl, the first appearance of Jean Grey. And I think, if I'm remembering right, because of the way I randomly choose my heroes every time I play a game, uh, I choose whatever the random number generator brings up, uh, for a long time, there were some heroes and villains that I never got around to facing. And if I remember right, Marvel Girl was the very last one on the list that had not been played. And then finally, I got her. I think, if I recall right, it was her. Uh, and then there's Beast First Class, who is very different from the Beast we know and love today. I much prefer the blue Beast, but this Beast is fine. If you know me by now, if you know my Marvel United taste, you know I am not a fan of reskins. And that's pretty much what this box is. It's a reskin of a bunch of characters you can get everywhere else. But something about this box in particular makes me okay with it. And I couldn't even put my finger on what it is. I think most of it has to do with Angel. Because like I said, he is very different to me from Archangel. They feel like two totally different entities, even though I know they're not. Um, and also Marvel Girl being very different from Jean Grey in terms of how young she is, and Beast being a very different looking beast. So it doesn't feel as much like a palette swap as, say, you know, sorry, Meeple Monkey, but as, say, Havoc 
versus Havoc in his much cooler X-Factor costume, right? Even though I like both of those. And I especially like that X-Factor jacket. That is a hell of a jacket. So under here, you notice these tiny training cards. Uh, the first small cards that Marvel United ever made. And I, I'm going to be honest, I have never used these because these are part of the Danger Room Challenge. But they all go down here. And the way the Danger Room Challenge works, here's the challenge card. Okay, so you attach the danger room to the hero's starting location, and then once that threat has been cleared, you can choose to use the danger room's end of turn effect instead, drawing a training card. And these grant you permanent effects, or they're discarded and they take effect at once. So a permanent one looks like this. So you could take this, and now you may deal one extra damage to a villain you dealt at least one damage to this turn. So it makes you a little bit stronger. Uh, another example is if you use the punch before using a star this turn, you gain an extra star. That's great. See, it really helps make it easier. Uh, and then one that you use right away, you add a punch symbol to the bottom of the card you're playing currently, valid as long as it's in the storyline. Uh, or you can add a move symbol to the bottom of the card you're currently playing. So this is done as a way to make the game a little bit easier. Hence the first class, it's thematic. I thought it was a really cool choice. These are the younger versions of the classic X-Men. They are teenagers. Uh, and it's meant to be a sort of gateway game drug, if you will, uh, for younger players. So, you know, you don't want to introduce your eight-year-old to this game and be like, hey, Jimmy, you want to go fight Green Goblin? Because guess what? Jimmy's going to run home crying because Green Goblin is going to destroy you. But if you get these Danger Room training cards and, you know, get Jimmy to grab a couple of these, all of a sudden the deck is not so stacked in Green Goblin's favor anymore, is it? So... That's kind of nice. That's a nice little touch uh, because a lot of people share this game with their kids. They play it with their families. It is a family-friendly game. It's great. Um, so that little extra spice of taking a box that is thematically youth, it's all about them being young. Even the villains are young and inexperienced. Taking that box and turning it into... Um, this is the box that you introduce your kids to through Marvel United, through this. Genius, brilliant. What a great way to do it. All right, I guess now it's time to talk about the miniatures. Let's start with my least favorite miniature in this box, and that is Cyclops. Um, just because it's the type of Cyclops I don't like. It's a very, uh, I'm gonna say it, it's an ugly costume. I don't like this costume for Cyclops, even though it is super classic, and I mean, this is X-Men back in the in the days when X-Men were brand spanking new. But it's just my least favorite for that reason. I got nothing against it. Just show me that hair, Cyclops. That's all I ask. All right. And after him, I think we will go with Quicksilver. Uh, it's a great dynamic running Quicksilver. Uh, it's just my... Whoops. It's just my second least favorite because... I think the hero Quicksilver is much cooler the way he's skidding to a halt. And this one from far away, uh, you wouldn't be blamed if you mistake this for Sabretooth because it's almost the exact same pose as Sabretooth. I wish I had him here as like, uh, just to show him off. But yeah, it's uh, it's Quicksilver. It, it does the job. It gets the job done. Totally fine Quicksilver. They nailed his hair. He's got very unique hair. I guess when you run a lot at high speeds, your hair kind of does its own thing. My next favorite would be this First Class Beast. I just like how big and chunky it is. I like that he's punching the ground. Um, Beast is my favorite X-Man, but I do prefer the blue furry version. Um, but I think they made the best possible chibi miniature of First Class Beast that they could. And this is it here. Next is going to be Marvel Girl. Because that's just a, a great... Marvel Girl, right? They got it. They got the hair. They got the pose. They really just sort of nailed that look and of that costume. The costumes are very simple, so there's a lot of just empty blank space on these costumes, um, which I can't remember if that's either something painters love or if that's their worst nightmare, uh, but it's one of the two. Painters, remind me. Do you like blank space or do you hate it? All right. And after her is going to be the Scarlet Witch for two reasons. One, because... Actually, for three reasons. One, because this one is red, 
Whereas the hero one, obviously, is blue. And I mean, Scarlet Witch not being Scarlet is kind of a... It's almost as bad as Red Hulk being purple. Um, the second reason I love her is that she's floating. Look at that. She's not touching the ground. Her cape is being used to hold her aloft. And she's floating, which is awesome. And the third reason I love her is because look at her hands, what they're doing. She's literally doing like... When you ask a little kid to pretend to be like a scary ghost and they go, Ooh, it looks like she's doing that. Isn't that amazing? Like... That just shows how even the villains in this box are like these young and experienced teenage twins. And she's literally trying to scare her opponents by going, uh, I, come on, that is so much fun. And you even look at look at her, her drawing. That's exactly what she's doing. She's like, Ooh, get away from me. I'm scary. I am from Sokovia. Love it. So, so fun that they did that. So, yeah, I love that Scarlet Witch mini. And I can't wait to get my hands on the other one that's in Witching Hour. So they better hurry up and make it come out, please. Pretty please. Next is going to be, it's it's a tricky toss-up between these two for my favorite. But I'll go with Angel as my runner-up. Uh, it's a great, great pose on Angel. Lots of characters in Marvel United have wings. But he has just full-on, there's nothing uh, artificial about them. They are just white feathery angel wings, which I think just looks awesome. And he's a very classic X-Man. Uh, so, yeah, I love the idea of getting the classic version of Angel in this box because the Archangel look is its own thing. It's kind of like, I, I look at him and Archangel, I'll put it this way, as he is yellow and blue Wolverine and Archangel is like Weapon X Wolverine or Old Man Wolverine or something. They are just two very different animals, even though they're the same character. So that's why I wanted Vanilla classic good old average joe angel and that's a great figure and finally the best figure in this box to no one's surprise i think is Iceman, because i mean throwing that ice ball first of all is fantastic he looks already that makes him look so different but also and it's tricky to see but if i kind of really get him up close and personal with you here he's gonna he's gonna violate your personal space for a second here he is sculpted in such a way where there's there's some texture to him. He feels different from an, an average other mini, right? He, he feels different. He feels like he is made of snow. If you look at her, look at her leg and how just it's a smooth piece of plastic versus his leg, there's some coarseness to it. It's like the difference between a regular painting and a matte painting. Or should, I should say a regular paint job and a matte paint job, because a matte painting is something totally different. Um, but that's that's what they did. They made him feel like he was comprised of snow, which I thought was just a lovely, lovely touch, as well as the little yellow boots. They did a fantastic job with Iceman. That's why he is my favorite figure in this box. I'm just throwing a little snowball. So much fun. That's the first class box. It's now time to pack things up. Uh, and as always, I add stuff to the boxes that don't necessarily come in them. And in this box, I only added three tiny things. I added equipment cards from Season 3. Because uh, there's Cyclops' visor in there. So I put it in there. And then I added a couple others because the X-Men core box does not have room for these. So I put the normal Cyclops' visor. And I also put Gambit's deck of cards. Because Gambit's box does not have room for equipment cards either. So I just figured, let's get all the X-Men equipment, because there's not a lot of them. I think it's literally just these three. And put them in the first class box where there's space for it. Also, this is a great way to see the difference between good-looking Cyclops and bland-looking Cyclops. Even Gambit would agree, right? Mon ami, I think you should uh, show your hair, my friend. That's a great Gambit voice. I'm definitely going to get hired for X-Men 97 Season 2. All right, let me pop those back in there. And I will put these happy chaps down there. And I'm just going to take that challenge card and put that there as well. This can go on top. And we have just seen X-Men First Class. Now, very different from a Season 1 expansion. So, we don't know what to expect points-wise until we tally everything up. Let's go do that now. Okay, time to tally up those points. What do we got in the first class box? All right, first class comes with seven minis. 
There's seven points right there. Five of those minis are going to be heroes. So when you get a hero, you get a point. That means we get five points. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, even though they are two separate minis, they are one villain at the end of the day. They work together as a pair. So that counts as one villain, which gives us two points. There are three locations in this box. So for the first time ever, that means we have a decimal value. Locations are worth a half a point each, which means these three locations give us 1.5 points. And then there's the Danger Room Challenge, which gives us a nice crisp one point to tie it all together. First class is worth 16.5 points of worthiness. Not bad. 16.5. Not bad at all. That puts it in a nice snug little area where it's just hovering around the most of the Season 1 expansions with a little bit more to it because it does offer you quite a few more miniatures and that kind of upped the ante a little bit. So that's X-Men First Class. Not a bad investment if you're looking for X-Men expansions. It might be one of the cheaper ones out there too, so that always helps. Next week we dive a little bit deeper into the world of the mutants, particularly Strike Force deeper, because it's time for the X-Force to take a stand. So join me when that happens seven days from now with X-Force here on Digital Charcuterie as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. I'm Andrew Fantasia. You're incredible. See you next time.